All right, now, this time we are learning a Hasidic discourse from the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Tuf <coughs> Shin Base, which means 1950, 1942. 1942. 1942, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe said this, a whole series of Mamor, and this is just a small example of what he said in these in the years. Terrible years, years of the Holocaust, the years of World War II. The Rebbe ran at the flea, took the last boat out of uh, Europe to Poland, Poland, and he was in Warsaw Ghetto, the bombing. <clears throat> and he arrived in America, and immediately he started to say, Mamarim of Hasidu, to explain what is God and how we can serve him. So here we go. This is a mimer, which is from Yud Kislev, 1942. <clears throat> it's on page 74, top in, in the uh, Sefer Mimorim of the previous Rebbe, Rebbe Yosef Yitzchak. Baba Batra, Dav Ayin Hey Amud Beis. In the Gemara, Baba Batra, page 75. The second side of the page, the other side of the page. Omer Rabbah, says Rabbah Omer Rabbi Yochanan, <clears throat> in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Atidim Tzadikim, in the future, the Tzadikim, the righteous Jews, Shenikro'in, <clears throat> they will be called Al Shmo Shal they'll be called God. It says in the, in the Talmud. The tzaddikim, the righteous Jews, will be called by the name of God. Huh? It's pretty strange. Jenemar, like it says, call a nikra bishmiel a kavodi. It's a it's a sentence in one of the prophets of Isaiah. All which is called in my name and for my glory, porativ yetsartiv apasiti. Everything which is called in my name and my glory, I created, I formed, and I made. <coughs> in other words, all the tzaddikim are, are existing for the sake of God. Because they exist for the sake of God, all they think about and all they act and all they do and all they feel, and their whole goal in life is only for to serve the Creator, according to the Torah, every single instant of their life, with love and fear and faith. So these tzaddikim are <coughs> called in the name of God. Upirish Rashi, and Rashi say, explains, <coughs> Rashi is one of the main commentators on the uh, five books of Moses and on the other books <coughs> of the Torah, and also on the Talmud. <coughs> and Rashi explains over there, she shmam, that their name will be Yudke Vavke, God's essential name. The name we don't say. We don't say that all we say now is Adonit. When we, when we make a blessing, we say Buruch Atah Ado. But in the future, they'll be called by the name of God. This is not mysticism. This is not some strange <clears throat> Kabbalistic idea. This is a Talmud. It says in the Talmud. Even though the Talmud is filled with mystical ideas and uh, the deepest secrets of the Torah, especially in the Agadita of the Talmud. But nevertheless, this is a pretty strange one. That the tzaddikim are going to be called by the name of God. What does that mean? And the Rebbe is going to ask this question. We'll see. That's, that's what he's, he's asking. Tzarek we have to understand. Tochen, no say. We have to understand what is the <clears throat> content, what is the meaning of this? Mam or Zeb. That Sadiqim will really be called God. You won't believe in God anymore. You'll believe in this. What does it mean? Shi'ev <clears> Shalom, <throat> it is impossible to say, Shahuka Peshuto, that it means simply. Shat Sadiqim, that a human being, <clears throat> no matter what form he is, or it says in the Torah clearly that the Jews are all called the sons of God. Bani Matem Lashem Alukecha. And God tells, God tells Moshe, 
Moses to go into Paro right in the beginning and say, Bani Bechori Yisrael, my son, my firstborn, my chosen one, Israel. So the Jews are the sons of God. And the Tanya explains what this is <coughs> because the Jews come from such a deep source. <coughs> God, nevertheless, the Jews are the sons of God. Nevertheless, you don't point to a Jew and say, that's God. Nobody ever pointed to Moshe, Moses, and said, that's God. Let's, let's bow down to Moses. It's fair for you. You can't do it like that. You can ask Moshe, like you can go to a doctor, you can ask him to help. You can go to Moshe and say, please, God, Moshe, pray to God for us. <clears throat> you can beseech Moshe like you ask a king, have mercy, build a road in front of my house or something. <clears throat> the Siddiquim can certainly help to reveal the godliness which is inside of you. <clears throat> and therefore, you're going to, the main thing of the tzaddikim is they help you to do Torah of a mitzvah. They encourage you to do Torah of a mitzvah. That's why you can go to tzaddikim and ask for a blessing. <clears throat> because the blessings are only there. Like the Jewish people went to Moshe right after Mount Sar. We learned this last week. They, uh, <clears throat> they crossed over the Yom Suba says they didn't have any water. So they went to Moshe and they said, Moshe, please give us water. And Moshe took a stick and he threw it in. So you can go to Siddiquim and ask them to help you, just like you can go to a doctor or a lawyer or a whatever it is, a president, a mayor, and ask them to help you. But th that doesn't mean he's God. He's God's representative. But he certainly is not called in the name of God. Here it says in the Gomorrah that, yes, in the future, in the days of the Mashiach, Siddiquim will be called by the name of God. <clears throat> what does this mean? It can't simply mean that we're going to call a person God. And the Allah sov sov, it is not so, is it not so that after all, Kam Tzadikim, also Tzadikim, Enu Ela Nivroim, even the holiest of Jews, they're just creations. Mukbalim, <clears throat> and they're limited. Bale Guf, Agashmi, they have a physical body. Hagam, even though Shazesh Omrim, even though the fact is that which we say, Atidim Tzadikim, that in the future these tzaddikim, the righteous Jews, sheikru'u will be called on the name of God. <coughs> he may be old, a kavana, the intention of who he is, is a man, be as a Mashiach. It's not talking about now. It's talking about in the days of the Mashiach. The giloy delatid and the revelation that's going to be in the Mashiach, in the days of the Mashiach. <coughs> as hari then, Gam Gashmi, even the physical world, Yeyeh will be Mizuchach. <coughs> it will be refined. Yoter more. Ba'inu Shagashmi de la'atid, the physical. In the future, Yeyeh will be al derech Gashmi, something like the physicality which was in the beginning of the creation of the world. Huh? It says when the, in the Torah that when God created Adam, he put him in a place called Gan Eden. Gan Eden means heaven. It was heaven on earth. <clears throat> well, there wasn't anybody to call him, and his, his wife is certainly not going to call him God. That you can forget that. Shalom itchilas zabria, kodem achet before the sin. Even though every Jewish mother thinks that her son is God, but the, nah, he didn't have a mother. He didn't have a mother, he didn't have a mother. The Chilas of Bria, Kodam Echet, Shel Eitzadahas. This is before the sin of Adam. Before Adam ate from the tree, so the world was very pure. And when the Mashiach comes, it'll even be more pure. Od Mezuchach Yoter. When Mashiach comes, <coughs> let's not talk about Mashiach comes. When the when the the Geula, the revelation that the Mashiach will bring, will purify the world. <clears throat> the world will be even more pure, more what I call transparent than it was in the days of <clears throat> of uh, Adam before he ate from the tree. <inaudible> because the physicality, the physical world that was in the beginning of the creation, haya <clears throat> mehuto the world was pure according to how it was 
in God's will. It was exact. The world was exactly the way God wanted it to be. Now, it doesn't mean that it was exactly the way that God wanted it to be, <clears throat> and that that's all. You didn't need any more. Because the, the, the God created Adam. He put Adam in the world to refine it. It says, <clears throat> What it means, the world was pure, means that all the parts were pure, they were clear. Like you get a puzzle, you buy a puzzle, 50,000 pieces, all the pieces are there. Right? Everything is there. Adam just had to come and put it all together. <clears throat> but that which God created the world, and he created it perfect, it was all ready to be fixed up. This was only what we call this is only God's external will. That that God created the world exactly the way he wants it so that it should be fixed up. That's only external. What does God want internally? Internally, he wants man to fix it up. He gave man the ability to actually do fix it up. He wants man to be his partner. That's why he created man. So that man will be his partner. So the world, when it was created, was perfect. What is it when it was perfect? It was perfectly ready to be fixed up. After the Mashiach comes, Mashiach will convince everybody. That's what the Lubavitcher Rebbe is doing. He's convincing all the Jews to do what a Jew is supposed to do. Then the world will be fixed up. It'll be even higher than it was when it was created. That, that was what man God created man for. To fix it up. Hainu Ratzon B'davar Asher Davar Ha'hu Alu Liot Kli El Oto Hadavar Hatachliti. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the world. The world was just a vessel. It was a means. It was a conduit to express the true will of God. What's the true will of God? That man should have taken the world and done with it what God wanted. It would have been at a higher level. You would have revealed a higher level. Because anything which is created that is only a means for something else, I share Ba'davar Ahu. That in that something else, that goal, Yesh Ratzon Panimi, there's an inner will. Bechol Davar Shehu Ba'atzmo, anything which itself, Eino Elam Mavo, it is anything which itself is only just a means, El Tachlit, to a goal, Hanirza, which is desired, Ba'atzmo Panimi, in the inner will, inner will, Hene Ha'ratzon, Eino Elochitzoni, it's only external alone. <clears throat> what does it mean? A person builds a rocket ship, right? They work for years and years and years, and they build a rocket ship. It costs them billions of dollars. They have the most genius people in, them, in the world. They all get together and they build a rocket ship, and it's finished, right? That's it. Is, is that really? It's finished? Yeah, it's finished. Look at the rocket ship. It's not finished. What do you mean it's not finished? And let's see if it works, right? The goal is to actually put a man on Mars so we can get a man on Mars and we can open up over there a shopping center and then we can make some money, right? That's why we want to do it, because there's customers over there. There's a tremendous, tremendous customer base potential on Mars. So I know there's the whole rocket ship and the whole spaceman and the whole thing is only for the goal of making money, right? He wants to make up. And even, even the, the, the shopping center that they build up there is also not the end. The, the goal is to make money all over there to see if the, if the Martians will really go for Coca-Cola or whatever you want to sell. Right? And if there's anything which is only a means to something else, that thing which is the means is called the external will. Right? A, a person builds the rocket ship. The person, the purpose of the rocket ship, that's the inner will. The external, the same thing with God. God created the world. In the beginning, the world was created. That was only God's external will. External, what did God create the world for? So that man would eventually purify the world, make it more refined, and then man would reveal true spiritual health, true physical uh, potential, and God will be revealed in the world like it was in the Holy Temple. The world will be, man will feel what man really is. <clears throat> so if so, when the Mashiach comes and purifies, then the world is really going to be even more pure. Ki ikra ratzon, because the main will, who is Tachlis, that's the ultimate purpose. A ratzon, a panimi, and so and, and, good. What's the inner purpose of God? What did God make the world for? 
who but Torah the mitzvahs that Jews should do Torah the mitzvahs but olam gashmi in the physical world. Hainu limur Torah when our Jews learn Torah. Haniglis vanistra that's what Mashiach will do by the way. Mashiach will bring all of the Jews back to learning Torah and doing the commandments. <coughs> Lahavina Baseikal to understand it. Baseikal in your mind to understand who would ever dream that, that would that was the key to open everything up. If Jews learn Torah and they do the commandments and they do it properly to understand the Torah, Baseikal Anushi and human understanding, or the Kaimita Mitzvahs and they're doing the commandments with physical things. For instance, Misfit Tefillin, they do the Tefillin with cloth, leather, diogashmi physical ink Mitzvah Sitzes <clears throat> they do the commandments physical commandments with Semer Gashmi Adam didn't do that Adam didn't do what God wanted he didn't use the physical world for what God wanted if so if the world was high and pure in the time of Adam before he fixed the world up think how high it's going to be after now when we fix the world up that's why God rose up in God's mind, but Briyas Olam to create the physical world. And there was physical world. It was very, the world was very, how do you say, refined. <coughs> Nevertheless, it was only a vessel to the inner will of God. That when God made the world, according to when, the time of Adam, before he ate from the tree, it was a pure world. But nevertheless, it was only a means. The world was not perfected. Masha'enkin, which is not the case. Zechuto shalagashmi, the purification, the refinement of the physical world. Shiela atit, that will be in the future. Oh, that's something totally different. Hine gashmi zeh, this will be. Not just like Gan Eden, like heaven. It'll be infinitely higher. This will because heaven is only a creation. In the future, will be revealed the Creator Himself. Mitzada <clears> Ratzon <throat> Penimi. Maybe that's why they call the Tzaddikim will be called on the name of God because the physical world will be so pure. The Rebbe is going to say no. We'll see. Shabbat Torah Mitzvahs. The world will be refined by Torah and the commandments. <clears throat> Then, after these thousands of years of doing Torah of Mitzvahs, the Torah was given, what, 3,300 and what, 20 years ago? 3,300 years of Torah and Mitzvahs, not to count the whatever it's 400 years of, of Adam, of, 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 of Abraham. Since the time of Abraham, 400 plus, all the, the, the trials and tribulations and prayers and good deeds that Jews have been doing, the suffering, how the world will be purified. Shehulamayla Yoter, this is infinitely higher. The world will be infinitely higher and more pure. Mikamo Zechuto, then was Hagashmi, the physical world, when it was created. Shehurak Mitzad Aliyat Aratzon, Chitzoni Aratzon. When God created the world in the beginning, that was only His external will. <clears throat> like the rocket ship. They made the rocket ship, but they have an internal will, right? To make it more practical. A person. Builds a business, he goes to work every day to business he wants to. Why he go? He wants to go to business. He wants to go to his job, right? That's why he does it. Nobody's forcing him. He says, no, that's he doesn't. That's he wants to, but that's only his external will. What's his internal will? His internal will is he wants the money. If he would win the the jackpot or something, he would win the jackpot as he would um if he would win the jackpot as he would not go to work anymore. Sell the business. Give the business to his friend or something. Wins $50 million in the lottery. Could be he'd never go to the business. Unless he really enjoyed the business. Then the reason that he's going <coughs> is, right, then still, the business that he has is still only a means to an end. What's the end? Something deeper. He enjoys talking to people. He enjoys serving people. He enjoys helping people. <laughs> but whatever the reason is, the business itself is just a means. <coughs> and the end, the goal is something going to be much, much deeper. Same thing with the world. The world is only a means. That's God's external will. His internal will 
is after Mashiach comes, the world will be purified, right? <clears throat> the world will be infinitely more purified. Bechalzeh. Nevertheless, Hine Gama Gashmi Dilati, even the physical world, as it will be in the future, after the Jews <coughs> all do tshuva, and all the Jews do exactly what they're supposed to do, nevertheless, the world will still be Mitzios Dover. It's still a world. <laughs> it's not God. God will be revealed here, but the world will not be God. If so, how can you possibly compare Hanivra, a creation, Leabore to the Creator, Borahu? Umau Diyuko shall rise. If so, how can you call <coughs> the Tzaddikim in the future by the name of God? It doesn't make any difference how pure it is. The world will achieve a level of purity that's incomprehensible, but nevertheless, it's still going to be a world. And people are still going to be creations. You can't call a creation God. Umau diyukosho Rashi. What does Rashi mean? She yesh Hashem. That the name of the tzaddikim will be God. Yudke vavke. The, the, the essential name of God. Shari yesh shiva shemos. There are seven names of God. She'enu nimchakim. There are seven names of God which is forbidden to erase. You're not allowed to erase God's name. <clears throat> it's forbidden. If you have the, even in, if you write a letter, even if you say God bless you, even if you say it in, in French, adieu, or in Spanish, adios, right? Adios means God. But if it's written there, you're not supposed to erase it. That's why when we write in English, we write God G D, because maybe somebody will erase the name. You're not supposed to. There's seven names of God <clears throat> which are considered to be. Holy names. Vakulam, Aim, Shemutam, they're all names of God. But, in <coughs> why does Rashi pick this name of Yudke Vavke? What does it mean? They'll be called the name of God. What do we care which name they call it? Rashi says, no, they'll be called the name of God, Yud, and then Hey, and then Vav. Why that name? Ach, and you know, it is because Ani Hashem Zeshemi. When Moshe was in the on Mount Sinai, God said to him, "My name is God Yud Kevavke. That's my name." Omer Azal, the rabbi, say in the in the in Breshis, "Who Shmi Shekarli Adam Rishon." This is the name that Adam called me. Adam gave name names to all the creations. So God said, "What's my name?" He said, "Your name is Yud, and then Hey Vavke. That's your name." The Eat of the Rabbit says that God brought all the animals in front of Adam, and Adam gave all the names, and then God said, Vani, Maushami, what is my name? Peshach Kodesh Baruch, in the time when God, Hevi, brought at the Behemoth, Vachayos, all the animals in front of Adam, the Kralim, Shemos, to call them names, Shalu Echokach, and he said, Vani, Mashami, he said, what is my name? God said, what is my name? Now, Adam was given the special wisdom that he knew the spiritual source of every creation because every creation is created from God's words. So Adam knew the spiritual source of every creation and he could actually bring it into the world by calling it. So God said, okay, then what's my name? I'm the creator. What's my name? Omar Lo, he said, L'cha to you, no likros yudke vavke. You are called Adoni. Adoni. Sha'ata Adon Libriotecha, you are the master of all creation. Now God's name is Yud, and then after that Hevavhe. Hevavhe means to, to be present. Haya Hove the year. Hove is now. That's got that's a Hevavhe. And the Yud means it's constant. So God is constantly creating all being. The call itavu that all existence. He is Mishem Yudke Vavke, is from this name of God. <clears throat> Each one of the names of God shows on a different aspect of God. <clears throat> that that God creates all the worlds, that comes from this name Yudke Vavke. Look, and therefore, Ha'ot Arishon, the first letter of this name, <clears throat> U'ot Yud, is the letter Yud. Hamora, which shows, indicates Al Tamidut, 
which shows on constantly. The letter Yud before a verb means future, but it also means present constantly. <clears throat> we could say either God cr- will create the world or that he creates the world. Yud, Kevokke. We don't say that word, by the way. We don't say it. We say Adoni. <clears throat> to meet it out, that God creates the world constantly. This is the name of creation constantly. Hove, constant creation with a yud in front of it. Ukomo tevet yase, like the 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 word yase and the pasuk kacha yase ilv. This is what Job does in the book of Job. This is what Job does constantly. This is how he does, and it's, it's a constant thing. Hari hayud more al tamido the and the letter Yud grammatically shows on constant action. And that's the secret of the name Yud Kevavke. That the Yud indicates Altamidos constant itavo. God is constantly creating everything. How do we say God doesn't really exist? God creates all existence. God is much, much, much more real than the physical or the spiritual. In fact, nothing really exists except for the fact that God is creating it. If God would stop creating the world, there wouldn't be any world. So God is creating the world every minute. That's This is God's name. He's creating all the worlds, the spiritual worlds, all these gods that the non-Jews believe in, all their religions, their spirits or gods or whatever it is are created by this aspect of God. That's the God of Israel. If so, how can it be that the tzaddikim are called on this name? Only God has this name. Well, but part is, there's a book called The Partist, which is a book of Kabbalah by Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. It says, Ani Hashem zu shumi, hu shumi, I am God, this is my name. Hamiyuchad bi, this is God's special name. <clears throat> there are sometimes other words are used in other situations. Like El, the El means power, and Elohim means judges. But the name Yudke Vavke is only... For the name that's only used for one thing for God. Hainu, the aim yos that even know. The gam shame of that also the name yud ke vavke. Ain well a shame, it's only a name. He may be old. Who shmiya miyuchad be? Nevertheless, this is the name that shows on my essence. Hainu shame shala atzmus. The name of the essence, name of God, shows on what God's essence is. Namely, that God creates any level, any spiritual level that you can talk about. In the creation, God creates it. (coughs) Any existence there is in the world, it's just a creation. God creates it. Loke, therefore, Hine, Humahave, therefore, God, He is the creator. Lefisha Kol, He Sabbath, because all existence, He Bekoach Ha'atzmus, comes from the power of God's essence. As we will continue, God willing, if so, the question comes back, if this is the essential name of God, and all being comes from it, and certainly no human being creates anything, so how can is it possible that the Talmud says that the righteous Jews, and in the future all the Jews are going to be righteous, will be called on the name of God? They'll be called God. What does it mean they'll be called God? So we'll see, tune in, and tomorrow we'll understand this wonderful, wonderful idea and how it's practical, very practical for us.